Hello there, Sense of God. It's 8 o'clock right here from Birmingham in England. And I am Sammy Joseph to the glory of Jesus. I just like to welcome you to tonight's Bible study. I Bible study. Interactive Bible study. I gotta move this closer. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're coming gradually to the end of the year, and it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be able to bring you the word of the Lord tonight. How are you all doing tonight? I hope you're doing well to the glory of Jesus. If so be it, let's give praise and glory to the name of the Lord. I'm still trying to find me right here. Bible study, where are you? Here we go. I see the happy boy. You see the happy boy right there? Where is it? You see that happy boy? <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of the Living God. Glory to the Lamb of the Living God. Now, if you're looking for us on the YouTube, it's not likely you're going to find us on YouTube tonight. We have some technical difficulties in Twitter. We are not likely going to be there tonight. We tried to fix that, but we couldn't get that fixed at this time. So let me just adjust this, actually. How do you do that now, Pastor? How are you all doing? I hope you're well. Ah. Are you all ready for Christmas? Dun, dun, everywhere you go. <laughs> Chill out. It's just, it's just one day of commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ. It's a time to give gifts to friends and families and people that matter to you. And I pray that your gifts also uh, will make impact in their lives. Now, for me today, has been very, 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 very fulfilling. By the grace of God, we were reaching out or outreaching out to Balispor. Is it Balispor? Ballyspore in is it Ballyspore? In Pakistan. You know, for twelve years I've asked the Holy Spirit consistently, Lord, show me how, where, when, you know, it's time for us to to outreach over to Southeast Asia, Central America, South America, you know, Mexico, uh, is it Belize? A few other countries in Central America. Now, I've been asking the Holy Spirit for a long time. Lord, when are you going to open the doors for us to go? Now, it seems like today was a belter. What do you mean by a belter? You belt it out. When you when they say that that musician sang a belter, that means he broke, he broke, he shattered the glass ceilings. Glory to God, about 45 people gathered today in Pakistan. As you can see on our social media, uh, right there on, and by the way, give me a second, I've got to have to change this. I was too happy, I forgot to change the privacy to public, so everybody can see us. So when you say Beltar, it means that it was fun. There were 45 people gathered together to hear the Lord in Pakistan today. And by the grace of the Lord, yours sincerely was used by the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Lord. I was just doing what God called me to do. You see, when you do what God called you to do, some of you in the new year need to ask the Lord, Father, what did you call me to do? What am I here? I mean, you're going to face, <laughs> ask me about it. You're going to face opposition even in that which I called you to do. But am I praying today? All right. So just let's get it one after the other. You're going to have to do what God called you to do because a fish can only swim in water. Give a fish, develop the, the fins of the fish and make him flap. He ain't going to be a bird. He ain't going to fly. He's coming down to the ground. <laughs> you blessed is that man or a woman that finds himself or herself in the center of God's will for his or her life. I believe I found mine. 
54 going 55 next March. But yeah, happy boy like me. <laughs> I can't believe it, Sammy. Oh, keep on disbelieving me. I'm growing older in reverse. <laughs> Some of you don't believe me. I say I'll be 120 if Jesus tarries. And I'll be looking like, like 60 at 100. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. But I'm paying the price too. I hope you join me pay the price. You feed well, you exercise well, you watch your spirit, watch your soul, watch what comes into your head, watch what comes into your mind, watch what comes out of your mouth. My kids recently told me I need to do a little bit, a little bit of a work on what comes out of my mouth. I said, well, you don't provoke me. <laughs> Came back, Daddy! I said, yes, honey, <laughs> what a problem. <laughs> Sister Marilyn Richardson, all the way from the United States of America, welcome in Jesus' name. Call your friends and neighbors, everybody together, and let's find, you know, good time. So today, I have done one hour preaching for Pakistan. Five lives were, were, were won into the kingdom, okay? I have had a meeting with uh, the president of the radio station, ChristianMix106.com, we had a wonderful time, you know, talking and trusting God for the new year and they extending to us, you know, um, areas in the ministry and lives where we pray for. Praise the Lord. Then, not quite an hour ago, I just finished up a wonderful interview with the Hope Report. I mean, this guy is an exile cop, pastor. Yeah. Exil is an officer, and yet is a man of God. Brother Jason, Pastor Jason, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so very much. If you're watching this from the Hope Report team, thank you so very much for the interview. I really did enjoy myself. I mean, I was, I mean, I love to talk for Jesus. That's what I do. I'm so great. I, I talk and I write and I prophesy and I pray. You know, and Sister Melissa, Sister Melissa, hooray. Uh, from the Hope Report, a subsidiary of the Mark Lindell Corporation or Recovery Center. We want to thank you so very much. This woman, of course, said that she just saw my video on the Facebook. And, you know, we meet a lot of people on the Facebook, some crazy, some wild, some. <laughs> but this man that I'm bringing on today, he's just have, he just has an exuberance of the joy of the Lord. I'm grateful to God for your life, sister. Thank you for those warm comments and reports on my life. And I'm looking up to God to um, not disappoint him, not disappoint the Lord, not disappoint uh, my family, not disappoint my friends, not disappoint our church, uh, church members and ministry people, not disappoint myself um, but disappoint my enemies <laughs> okay Sammy <laughs> you gotta ship in your own life with your own mouth <laughs> I'm gonna disappoint a lot of you enemies Sammy do you have enemies yeah <laughs> a lot <laughs> I just hope not to talk about them. The first enemy is the devil. <laughs> He's your enemy too. <laughs> the demons, oh, they don't like you. And I don't like them. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Call your friends together tonight and let's have fun in the presence of our Father God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, teach us your word tonight and teach us how to be thankful and how to be grateful. And tonight, Lord, you will minister to your saints through my vocal cord and my lips, and Lord, pour out your wisdom, pour out your power, pour out your strength. Let there be truth, verity, and backing up with the word and the power of God in every word that we preach. In Jesus' name, set men free. Open men's eyes, O God. Speak to men. Let them hear the voice of the shepherd, their shepherd, 
tonight. And if there be anyone that has not come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, Lord, even tonight I pray as as they listen, that they will say, Jesus, come into my heart, and they will be saved. <laughs> I just give you all the praise, Jesus, honor, power, and dominion. Lord, we pray for those who are mourning or grieving at this time. You pour, oh God, oil of gladness into their wounds. Bind them up with the bandage of the balm of Gilead and make them whole, oh God, I pray. Meet every need, heal every disease. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Father, I just want to thank the Lord for this great opportunity to be with you tonight. So, that's how you're going to find me. Now, the other way you're going to do this is, well, our channel is on the YouTube. It's Harvestway's channel on the YouTube. I'd just like you to click upon the notification bell all right, and invite a family member and friend along and just subscribe freely. It's free, free subscription in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, at 10 o'clock on the last day, New Year's Eve, every year we meet at B311TT at Northfield in Birmingham, at Holloway Hall. Please invite your friends and your families. If you're very close by us here, invite everybody that you know and bring them in to the glory of Jesus Christ. We start at 10 o'clock and we finish at five minutes past midnight, New Year's Day. Listen to Dr. Simon Joseph and we are here in the world on Christian at Christian Mix or on Christian Mix 106.com twice every Sunday, 7.30 a.m. EDT Eastern Time, that's 12.30 p.m. UK. Repeat, repeat broadcast at 6 p.m. EDT, that's 11 p.m. UK time at night. And three times on Tuesdays, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 7 p.m. EDT. Just add five to those numbers. That's 10, 3, and 7. Just add five to those, and you will be good. Share with your friends as well. To the glory of Jesus Christ. What are we talking about tonight? Let's go to what we're talking about tonight. We are still talking about Thanksgiving. So tonight, I'm going to be sharing together with you two characters. Funny characters. Funny, funny characters. How do you say funny characters? Because they are funny. They are kings, or they were kings, but funny kings. They are powerful, and yet they were powerless. <laughs> they were rich, physical goods, and they didn't know what to do with the riches. And they were poor. They were impo They were actually not just only poor, impoverished. Here's the difference between poverty and impoverishment. Impoverishment is an eternal state of being. <laughs> You're going from here on earth to eternity. Poverty is tricking. Nebuchadnezzar was the strongest king in his time. Powerful king. Strong influence and affluence. Sometimes affluence and riches, Billy Graham says, Dr. Billy Graham says, often bring spiritual poverty. It's nothing wrong to be rich in the Lord. And you know that you have the riches and you can serve the Lord with your riches. In other words, you have the riches and riches and got you. There are some of you that are aiming at riches, and those are the things that will destroy you. Yeah, say it again, Pastor. Yeah, some of you are aiming at riches, and riches will destroy you. Some of you are running after the ungodly mammon. That's what Jesus says, ungodly mammon. It's ungodly mammon. Mammon is a spirit that rules the world, that rules the world of economics, that makes men become slaves of money. Are you a slave of God? Are you a slave of man and mammon? I don't know. Only you can answer that. You're a slave of, say, I am a slave of righteousness. <laughs> there are certain things I will not, there are certain food I will not eat. There are certain places I will not go. There are certain, uh, I'm a Nazarene in the spirit. You know what it means to be a Nazarene? You can't drink certain drinks. 
<laughs> you can't live a certain lifestyle. <laughs> if you be faithful to your Nazarene vow and to, one that, to the one that called you, if you are born again of the Holy Spirit, you're a Nazarene as well. I don't know what a Nazarene is. Google it. I always say to you all the time, I am not called to spoon feed people. I'm not, you know, spoon feeding you. Baby, take, open your mouth, pull your lips. Nonsense. I don't do that. God. <laughs> okay, how do you like me to say it? Okay, you know, I'm not sent of God to baby spoon feed you. Brother, I'm sent of God to feed you and let you grow so that you can get off your bum on your two feet and walk and run and fly and carry others with you and teach them to do the same. Oh, yeah. So when we're talking about, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, a very powerful, very strong king, and yet he was in abject poverty of the mind and the spirit. Why? How do you find it easy to be a human being and you're kicking against the pricks? That's what Jesus, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, in the book of Acts, did ask, the Spirit of Jesus, yeah, did ask Saul of Tarsus before he became Paul of Tarsus. How, excuse me, how do you, how do you kick against the pricks? Except you are sick. Yeah, it's madness to kick against the pricks, such as it is madness to arrogate power to yourself in so much so that you are filled with power, absolute power, corrupts absolutely, and you are corrupted. You're so much filled with power that you don't know what to do with it and what not to do with it, so much so that you don't... You See, let me tell you one thing you don't do with power. You don't arrogate power to yourself. Power is given to you, and you surrender it back to those that gave it to you. Hello? Hello? <laughs> bring, up, bring all those politicians in. Some of you are... Most, not some, some, most, most of you are thieves. Yeah. You are usurpers. Power is given to you, and you are not serving those that give the power to you. The normalcy is that power is given to you, and you surrender that power back to the person that gave that power to you. That's how God designed it to be. God gave Nebuchadnezzar influence and power and affluence and riches and wealth. And I told you sometime, if you're not, if you are not born again, and you're, if you're born again and you're not well taught, uh, the spirit of mammon will rule you with your money. In other words, you'll become a slave of money. That's mammon. That's mammonism. Slave of money. So much so that you can't even spend. Some some slaves of money can't spend the money that they earned. <laughs> the Bible says that, that. That's the kind of person that the Bible says that, that a fool heaps up wealth you heap up the wealth and you don't know who's going to spend it. The Bible says the wealth it calls you wicked. <laughs> You're wicked. You're wicked. I didn't say so. God says so. He says you are wicked. The book of Proverbs says that the wealth of the wicked is late. You, you store it up for Sammy. Story. Yeah, you heard, you heard me rightly. Yeah, I'm not blinking at you alone. I'm going to stare in your eyes. Store that money up and the wealth up for Sammy and other God-filled, Holy Spirit-inspired men and women across the world. We're coming to take it, man. We're getting ready. We take your money. We're going to 
You look, we're not just going to take it. You will surrender it to us in the in the midst of your days. I'm I'm preaching good. I'm preaching the word of God. Money is not meant to have you. You are meant to have money, but money has had you. You can't spend it. This Nebuchadnezzar, when he wanted to spend his money, he didn't know what to spend money on. So he made a ninety foot tall ninety. F- <laughs> I think a meter, right? A meter is three point three three feet. <laughs> a meter is three point three three feet. This guy made ninety foot tall. That's about thirty meters tall. Gold. Did you read your Bible, or you did? Or maybe I'm wrong. Gold. Ninety feet tall. Gold. Nine feet wide span. Gold. Idol. <laughs> I'm talking to you from Daniel chapter 4. Anytime that you hear the sound of the uh, harp and dulcimer and all that, da di da di da di da di da you all make sure you're going to fall down and bow. And the three Hebrew children says, No, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't care about you. Oh, king, we're going to call you your name. You only you only meant to be called your name disrespectfully when you disrespect the one that gave you the power. And some of you politicians deserve to be kicked out of the office that we voted you into because you are no good. So Nebuchadnezzar didn't know what to do with the power, but thank God for the three Hebrew children. We are not going to bow. Throw us in the furnace. So they heap them there. You mean being born again will cost you pain? Yep. Most certainly. <laughs> you see the way I said it? Most assuredly. <laughs> you know how I said that? The Bible says in the book of Timothy, letter of Paul's letter to his son, spiritual son Timothy, he says, son, be careful that you live godly because everyone that live godly Doubtlessly, they must suffer persecution. Question, are you suffering persecution rightly or wrongly? (laughs) Because some people are stupid. So the economy beats them, family beats them, everybody beats them. They are are codependents, so relationships beat them. They are empaths, and they can't think for themselves most of the time. So narcissists come and beat them. Now, the Bible says if you're, you know, Apostle Peter says, if you're suffering wrongly, if you're suffering, make sure you suffer rightly. How do you suffer rightly? You get persecuted for the kingdom of God. And for Christ's sake. But make sure you don't do it out of no brains. Oh, yeah. You suffer wrongly. You should suffer wrongly. You should be beaten. But if you're not suffering wrongly, it's just normal for you to be persecuted in the Christian walk. The devil will come against you. Oh, yes. We also will come against him by the power of the Lord. And somebody has to win. The name of the winner is Jesus Christ. We already have. We are not win. We are not winning. We have already won. We are fighting from the position, from the vantage the po- uh, position of a winner. We are walking. See, the devil is a guy that wants to take away your inheritance. Winning and victory are our inheritances in Christ Jesus. Now that if you don't know that, the devil goes, "Hey, this is mine." And you say, "Please." Give me my health back. You're begging the you're begging the devil. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't. No wonder he looks at you like a like a cuckoo cuckoo bird. <laughs> cuckoo ki, cuckoo chicken. <laughs> I was in Kenya the other time. One of the words that I remember is cuckoo cuckoo 
Kinya, Kinya, Kuku Kinyaji or something. I forgot this now. I need to come back to Kenya. Been to Kenya in 2020, 2019 was the last time I was in Kenya. Kuku Kinyaji. Kuku Kinyaji means chicken. <laughs> Some of you, God wants to, God wants you to know that you are eagles. Say with me tonight, I am not a chicken anymore. Have you ever heard about the story of the ugly duckling? Why am I the weak? Why am I the ugliest amongst you? I got a long beak. I got long talons. Everybody got webbed feet. They just swim effortlessly, but I gotta have to flap it. I don't even, I don't even know how to flap it. I just want to drown. I don't want to even go near the water, sir. You're not ugly. You're an, you're a bald eagle hatched by a duckling. Some of you, your duck mama is a wrong dogmatic person or person. A wrong minister. I teach you the lie. You don't know the truth. You don't read the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when last did you open your Bible? You don't want to open. You don't want to read. You don't want to pray. You don't want to talk to God. You don't want to go to church. You don't, of course, certainly, you certainly will not want to give the glory to God. And we're talking about intentional things. Even. You are mad. See, let me tell you something. Any wealth or riches or blessings that God gives you is as a result of God's grace. Say it again, Pastor. You don't deserve it. Neither do I. Is by the grace of God. For by the grace of God are you saved through the faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's an inheritance worked by Christ Jesus, given to you. The Bible says it's the, it's the goodness of God that turns us away from sin and brings us to repentance. But, but you don't want to give that glory to God? You're a mad person. Yes, I mean... You're abusing us on your program. No, 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 no. It's madness. Do you recognize when somebody is mad? Or you don't? I'm describing to you mad, spiritual madness. You serve money instead of money serving you. You're stashing up money instead of to stash up, stash up in the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus says. Is store up wealth for yourself. Wear the moth and, and all those, you know... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, cancerous worms do not eat in the kingdom. How do you store money in the kingdom? You store money in the kingdom by affecting somebody's destiny on earth and changing that evil destiny into a good destiny. That's how you do it. That's how you. That's how you. That's how you send send wave. You know send wave. You know. Western Union money transfer, the old time, your money grant, whatever you use, uh, PayPal, uh, XE.com, or all those them, uh, as, as a Snap, or what do you call what do you call this? Cash app, whatever you whatever. GoFundMe on earth, heaven's GoFundMe that builds your mansion in heaven are the good works that you do by your time, treasures, and talent. On earth, you invest these talents and treasures and time, and money in the lives of those that need it most so that you can empower them and liberate them away from the clutches of hell and Satan and demons. That is why you are rich. It's my money. It ain't your money. <laughs> <laughs> say it again, Pastor. I love why you say that, Sammy. I worked for it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 18, 16, 17, 18. I am the one that made you rich, saith the Lord. I give you the power to get the wealth. No, but I'm just naturally. I'm, I just got a brain from my father. You could have got a brain, the cuckoo, cuckoo, kinyeki, kunyechi, cuckoo, cuckoo brains of of your great grandfather. <laughs> yeah, by Jenna. Yeah, you could have. <laughs> it could have been worse off than this. Are you still complaining? Because you are you are you are spiritually out of tune. You are you Holy Spirit has to fine tune you tonight. Because you are just not different away from Nebuchadnezzar 
and from Herod the Tetrarch. How do you say it, Pastor? Well, I'll just go show you by the word of God. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, languages, this is my dream, I had a dream. That's Daniel chapter 4. He's always having a dream. You know why he's having a dream all the time? Because God is warning him. Some of you have dreams that you don't understand. God is warning you. You don't understand the dream. Dream, get dream. Get Holy Spirit filled prophets that will interpret your dream to you. Are you listening to me? This guy was so powerful, so strong. That he just thought it's just what it is. But you know what happened to Nebuchadnezzar? He got up someday and says, Look at this. Most likely, maybe he was wearing purple. Now, this is purple, all right? This is royalty. You see that? You see that color? It's royalty, all right? In the spiritual realm or in the Bible, anytime you hear about purple, that's purple. It's royalty. It symbolizes royalty. In the Old Testament, in the, in the Bible, the kings wore purple. Purple or gold. Golden or purple. Or light blue. Royalty. The Holy Spirit just told me that somebody just got the interpretation of their dream. You saw yourself wearing purple and you didn't know what it means. God is about to turn your fortune around. Baby, you go, you go get in touch with me. <laughs> You don't know what I just told you? <laughs> you know how you're going to find me? Harvestways.org, man. So you go. Admin at harvestways.org. God is about to turn. He's going about to turn. Just flip it over. You've been under for a long time. God wants to flip it over and turn it the right way up. That's why you were wearing purple in that dream. So this Nebuchadnezzar, this Nebuchadnezzar was so proud, so self-sufficient, so self-absorbed, so self, 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 every self, ish, 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 is the spirit of the devil, is the spirit of madness, selfishness. We're talking about spiritual madness tonight. If you recognize somebody who is physically mad, Mentally, mentally unstable. Yeah, we're talking about spiritual instability tonight. Because this Nebuchadnezzar, even though he was very powerful, he was very strong, he did something stupid and mad. He woke up someday and said, he said, look at me. Is this not this kingdom that is mine? Sister Ennis, welcome. Danny, welcome also. Danny is my son. Welcome, Sister Ennis. Welcome from Michigan in Jesus' name. Very powerful. Is this not my kingdom? Is this not the kingdom that my hands have built? Please, when God makes you succeed, give the glory back to God. Keep the joy for yourself. Say it again, Pastor. If God has made you succeed in 2022, and I believe you have, how do you how do you know that? How did you know that I succeeded? You're alive. You're breathing on your own. Now listen, if you're in the hospital tonight or breathing with the AIDS, you know, like oxygen you know, mask and all of that and long whatever and, you know, wires and, you know, tubes fixed in. I want to pray for you right now because as I was speaking, the Holy Spirit said to me, pray for those who can't breathe by themselves. They are alive, but the health needs to be perfected. Can we pray right now? Right now, I'm, I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing, I'm hearing my father wants to heal some of you tonight if you put your faith in this yeah 
In fact, if all of you put your faith in this, if you're in the hospital ward, on the bed, you can you you can move all these wires are, are fused in, are plugged in. The compassion of God is coming to you. Compassion, the compassionate Christ is passing by you tonight, whatever time it is. God wants to heal you tonight. He wants to give you health. He wants to give you power to your mortal body. The Bible says, if the spirit of God that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead is alive and is inside of you, he will quicken. That's the word. Quicken. It's a reaction. He will. It's like you you put hydrogen peroxide with chlorine. You go get something. It go, shh. It go react, man. God wants to kickstart. Cha-cha. Your mortal body. Can I pray with you right now? Right now? There is no distance in the spiritual realm. Baby, listen. Wherever you find a way, I don't have to touch you. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there. Angels are, if you can do that, you can do this, you feel the air. You're cutting through millions of angels. They are always at attention to our words and our, and our needs. In Christ Jesus. Can I pray with you right now? I'm asking you, let me pray with you, please. It's free. Freely it's given. Oh, yeah. You'd be good to come say thanks to Jesus. Oh, that's another madness. You get a healing, you run away. Maybe some of you run away. But God will still heal you, you know. He will still heal you because he's a good God. You are the good, good father. It's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i am loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you are the good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are. Father, is the season that is rife with angelic activities across the world. We are in that season right now. And we trust you by your word, Holy Spirit. The Bible says everyone that came to you you healed them all. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as many as are asking you, Holy Spirit, to get out and get strength to be able to walk and carry their bodies again, carry their frames again, to be able to leave the sickbed, O oh God, to be able to be healed of the diseases and afflictions, I release the word of the Lord. The Bible says he sent his word. He healed them. He delivered them from all their afflictions and destructions. Be healed. Yeah, it's the word of command. Be healed. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Demons go. Afflictions go. Diseases go. Be healed. Oh, yeah. These ones will give the glory to God. They will not arrogate power to themselves. They will give all the glory to Jesus. So Satan, back off, back off. Let go, let go. Let bondages be broken. Let it be, let them be smelted. Let chains be broken and destroyed forever. Right now, by the word of God in my mouth, be healed. And in the name of Jesus, rise up. Take up your bed by yourself. And you, you carry it and you go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm discharging you right now, spiritually, by the word of the Lord. And the doctors will come and certify. We don't know what 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 happened. What happened? Did you see what happened? No, you, you don't need to see what happened. Jesus is at work. Be healed right now. Let your healing confound the understanding of the medical, of the medics, of the doctors, of the nurses. And but let it also bring glory to the name of the Lord. It's what I pray for right now. Be healed. 
in Jesus' name. And Satan, never you come, and <laughs> never, I shut the door against you. Yeah, firmly bolt the door against you. You will not come back in these lives. No more. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Yeah. Power belongs to God. Healing belongs to the children. Say it again, Pastor. Power belongs to God. That's what Jesus said. Healing belongs to the children. Healing is the children's bread. That's what Jesus said. Healing belongs to you. Healing belongs to me. Hey, well, but hey, do you really think that Jesus still heals today? Shut up. Yeah, yeah. That's unbelief. Yeah. You are offending God. It's madness. Unbelief. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they said I healed Sister Sam, so I don't think he can heal me. Take that, take that butt, that big butt of yours out of the door, man. It's too big. That's why you can't move. Take it out of the door. Let the Holy Spirit move. Stop reasoning. What is not? Mary did not reason. They said, be it unto me according to your word. According to your promises, let it be to me. And she conceived. Yeah. Get yourself out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do his work tonight. Nebuchadnezzar did not do what we did just now. He said, we vow to give all the glory to God. Some of you, that's what you that's all you need to say. Lord, if you get me out of my situation that I've been in for so I don't know how long you've been in that situation for this so many years. Oh you know the devil is a bad devil, he just keeps people in bondage, just makes them roll over. You roll over time. You roll over time. You're doing time. That's another expression of being in jail. There are some of you that are prisoners of hope. That's a good jail to be in. You're waiting on God. Don't run away from him. Don't run away from God. Don't let the devil push you out of your standing position. Having at all you stand. Keep standing. I'm also standing. There are many things I'm waiting on the Lord for. I'm also a prisoner of hope. The Bible says today you receive a double portion. Say to yourself, today, yeah, I, Sammy, yeah, Sammy Joseph. Yeah, if you don't know your name, just say Sammy Joseph. Receive a double portion. Oh yeah, because we are prisoners of hope. That's that's a good jail to be. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit and my body and my soul and my life and my times and everything. You drive my car. You lead my way. That's a prisoner of hope. The Bible says you will get a double portion. So you know what I'm looking for when I look out my window? When I'm driving my car, look out the windscreen, I'm looking for double portion. <laughs> I'm expecting double. You don't know what the Bible says, that if a thief is caught, what he does pay back? Sevenfold. You don't know your Bible? You pay me back seven. So if I lost seven million, I'm getting 49 million. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. No, 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 man. You're getting it back. Say to yourself, I'm getting it back. If you took my health one way, certain, I'm getting seven strong fold, seven fold stronger than you beat me. Some of you went through some hardship in 2019, 2022. It's time for sevenfold return right now in Jesus' name. Why? Because God knows that you are a prisoner of his hope and you are going to give glory to God. Nebuchadnezzar was nobody's prisoner. In fact, it is a spiritual offense to not be a slave of somebody. <laughs> you better be a slave of God. Yeah, that's who Jesus was, a slave of God for man's sake. Paul says, Paul, the apostle, slave of God for your sake. 
Nebuchadnezzar was nobody's slave. He was everybody's president. Nobody could tell him what to do, what not to do. He didn't want to hear nobody. He didn't want... But God knows how to get them. Those guys in high places and authority, God knows how to get them. Oh, yeah. He knows how to speak to their hearts. And if they will not listen, he still knows how to deal with them. So how did God deal with Nebuchadnezzar's madness? He gave him a dream. You king of all kings you are. Small k. Jesus is the king of all kings and the big L of all lords. But you found your leaves, your branches caught. That's a dream that Daniel interpreted to him. But the stump cut down the tree. Cut down this tree. This tree was big and huge and mighty. See, I'm closing my eyes. I'm seeing the vision of the word of God. Are you listening to me? Where is it in your Bible? It's in the book of Daniel. Find it out. <laughs> Show me where it is. No. Or stand. Eight. Go to Google. Alexa, Google me. Alexa, find Daniel. Book of Daniel. Yeah, yeah. You should have whatever. You should have all these things, all this app on your, on your phone. See, but you're too lazy. You don't want to dig. You don't want to get your hands dirty. You don't want to get your hands wet. How are you going to want to have raise a baby? And you don't want to get your hands wet, except you're going to have babies raised by um, AI. <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> robots. Yeah. <laughs> Give your baby to robots <laughs> so that you don't get your hands wet. No, 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 no. In the kingdom of God, we get steady and ready. We get dirty for God, put our hands in these things and dig. Branches cut those branches off. All those birds of the air and animals that came to lodge under it, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. Cut the tree off itself. The tree represented his authority, his influence, his power. Listen to me. Power, interest, power, influence, authority that is arrogated to self will be caught down. Say it again, Pastor. Power that is given to you that you arrogate to yourself, you don't give it back to those who give it to you, will be caught down. God is the all-powerful. He says, give the power and the glory back to me. Me. God. Alone. Alone. Give the glory. How do you give the glory to God? You say, Jesus, I give you thanks. Intentional thanksgiving. Intentional thanksgiving reverses the devil's course. You see that? Intentional thanksgiving reverses the motion of, of Satan. Intentional thanksgiving shuts the door and wedges the door in the plans and operativeness of the devil. Intentional thanksgiving breaks and destroys the yoke. Intentional thanksgiving uproots gates and foundations that had been cursed for generations past. Intentional thanksgiving. Lord, I don't feel like giving thanks to you, but you know, Sammy says, I nevertheless will have to intentionally just give you thanks. So I give you thanks that I am alive. Yeah. It's not an insult. If you can pray, just start like that. Just be honest with God. He knows. He knows what you're going through. Okay, he knows what you're going through, but why does he want me to pray? That's none of your business. <laughs> That's the way he is. Here's a father who wants his children to come to him. Some of you, you're getting gifts for your kids, the gifts that your kids haven't asked. You're a bad parent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's madness. <laughs> God ain't going to give you gifts that you didn't ask for. He knows you need them, but he's not going to give you, though. You know why? Because gifts that you did not ask for, that you did not pray for, they're just useless anyway. You're going to blow them. You don't know what it costs. 
You didn't work for it. You didn't pray for it. You didn't thirst for it. You didn't seek for it. You didn't knock for it. But you want the door open. That's spiritual madness. You're going to have to knock. You're going to have to seek. Knock, it will be open. Seek, you will find. Search. You're going to go for it. Are you listening to this? So God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to be interpreted his dream. And you know how wonderful God is. He allowed one year. The Bible says 12 months in the book of Daniel. To pass. And this king never learned his lesson. Greatest king. Most powerful. Royal robe. Maybe purple. Centered to the top of the flat roof of his kingdom. He looked as far as he could see. He said, give me binoculars. Got the binoculars and tried to focus and looked far. Oh, look at those castles. Look at those. Look at those. And then he caught, he caught, he cast a last glance on the 90 meter, 90 feet tall, 9 feet wide golden statue, image to the devil. He said, Yeah, nobody like me. That night. Oh, yes, Jesus. That night. God gave the commandment to the ears, I Y R, Chaldean word for angels. Angels are all around you. Be careful what you say at this season. They are listening intently. Demons, angels, godly angels, they're all around. Oh, you go, well, I'm just tired of this. I just wish I'd die. Ah! What you say? <laughs> I'm just, I just don't know. I'm just tired. I'm, and you're just round, just round the, just round the bend. Your miracle is just round. It's like you're running hundred meter. You're running four hundred meters, and you're you're turning towards the, the bend, the last stretch, man. So you can straighten up and give all you want, and you curse yourself. No wonder you're not gonna make it in a new year. I didn't say so. You wanted it that way. You're going to have to write your future with your lips. Your lips and your tongue are the future dictators, dictators in the spiritual realm. You're going to have to say the way God said it so that you'll have it the way God said you will have it. So Nebuchadnezzar was bent over. The angels bent his limbs into the limbs of, I don't know, an animal. He began to grow nails. Yeah, on this part, this is God. Until seven years passed over him, he ate grass. In the, he, look, he crawled, out, he, crawled, he, he crawled out on all fours out of his, out of his, his palace because he was mad. And God wanted to teach him a lesson. I'm not sure he died well. Even after seven years, he came back and said, yeah, I now know that there is a God in heaven that lives amongst men. And still, he raised his son, Belteshazzar, that did almost the same that he did. Maybe worse than he had done. My friend, try not to repeat the same mistakes. God had given him many dreams in the past. Yeah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You saw the fourth person was like the angel of God, like the son of man, son of God, right? Son of God. It was Jesus. Oh, yeah. He's a consuming fire. And uh, he promulgated and promulgated a new decree, and he promoted those people. After a few years, he forgot God again. Are you like that too? You are resedazzled by the spiritual alone. You don't know that when even it seems as if nothing is happening, God is still at work. The second king tonight, who was crazy in five minutes, Herod the Tetrarch, Acts of the Apostles. You want to see it? You like to see it? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. 
Acts of the Apostles in chapter 12. And about the time that Herod the king, that's his name, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. I told you persecution. He killed, he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And he thought he was feeling big. Are you in authority tonight? You're the one that signed the death sentence of others. You're the governor. You're the president. Be careful. You're so much powerful that you can grant pardons and lock men's destiny up for the rest of their lives of eternity. Be careful. Herod killed James, the brother of John. You remember James and John? The Boanagers, the Boanagers, the sons of thunder. He killed after Jesus died. Jesus gone to heaven. Now the church has started. Acts chapter 12. He arrested uh, uh, James and he killed him with a sword. Wicked man. And when he saw that this pleased all the Jews. No, the Jews. It didn't please all the Jews. It pleased the demonic Jews. You know, some of you. You're prosecuting the church of a living God, and you think that pleases your constituency. God will wipe you out. <laughs> absolute power corrupts absolutely. So because he thought that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Oh, you made a mistake, boy. There are some people you don't touch. Or you touch them, they will, the anointing on their lives will kill you. Okay. I know you don't like me to say that, though. But you don't like to hear the truth. It wasn't that James wasn't anointed, but God allowed him to do that. And now when he saw that James is gone, well, I'm okay, I'm going to vex the church. That's, that's the voice of the devil. I'm going to vex Sammy. You will vex yourself, saith the Lord. Shenakirib, you will vex yourself. Herod, you will vex yourself. Nebuchadnezzar, you will vex yourself. Satan, you will vex yourself over me, over my family, over my ministry, over my loved ones. You are vexing. You will vex yourself in Jesus' name. No harm. Shall come near us because we plead the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, born like a baby. Burn, not like, burn a baby in a manger of such a time like this. Who has sent me with a word of reconciliation, the word of hope, the word of prophecy? Because the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of prophecy tonight. You will vex yourself. Yep. That's a prophecy. So he took Peter. Read the whole story. And after a while, after the angel had released Peter and all that stuff, you see what happened? In verse 20, in verse 18, as soon as it was daytime, there was no small stare amongst the soldiers what had become of Peter. You know what happened? The angel of the Lord came into the prison yard, prison cell, Angels, there are no there are no demons that can stand the angels of God. So the prison doors open by themselves. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. This Jesus, whom I preach to you tonight, or teach tonight, about whom I teach tonight. There are no chains that can hold him back. There are no gates. That can keep him out. There is no airtight that he cannot enter. There is no wall that he cannot pass through without opening the door. He doesn't need your key. <laughs> he coming through the door. He coming through the wall. He coming. He coming through. He coming through anywhere where you least expect him. But to us are expecting him shall he appear the second time the Bible says without sin he's coming to perfect us in righteousness in the name of the Lord this 2023 you will see God build up God's own people you will see God release those who have been locked up like Peter you will see Herods they are going to lose their lives Sammy you're angry 
I do I look angry? <laughs> I'm just I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit says is about to happen. Brother Scott, all the way from Canada, thank you. Welcome and Merry Christmas, sir. In Jesus' name. So if you read that story very carefully, Acts of the Apostles in chapter 12, you see there that there is a small country that this man, this demonic king, can kings be demonic? Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar was demonic. Herod was demonic. That's why we tell you to vote for righteous people. You know what? Righteousness, the Bible says, exalts a nation, and sin is a reproach to many people. The Bible says when the righteous are in power, the city rejoices. But when righteous, when the unrighteous are in power, the city mourn. Vote the right godly people into office. And more godly people need to run for offices. My friend, 2023, run. Yeah. So we can get, we want to get rid, we want to get rid of all the Herods, man. Of all Nebuchadnezzar, put the righteous people in power so that we can rejoice. So that country was a country of Tyre and Sidon, and he used to send them aids. And I'm finishing with that story tonight. And so Herod was highly de displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon because he was king. But they came with one accord to him, and having made blessed us, the king's chamberlain, their friend, they desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. Yeah. And upon a day that is set Herod, he was arrayed in purple. I told you purple. Yeah. Sat on his throne. Made an oration to the people. Stupid pompous, self-inflated, demonic, kicking against the pricks, Herod, mad Herod. You're kicking against the pricks, man. Everybody can sing your praise, but is God singing your praise, though? And the people gave a shout, this is the voice of God and not man. Really? The Bible says immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. He was the first man that we know that hell came down on. Hell's worms, hell's lively worms. The Bible says there are living worms in hell. Lively. Don't tell it, Master. Don't tell me about it. You must have a demon. <laughs> what is there not to tell? It's the truth. Hell's worms descended on him and gobbled him. Can you imagine somebody having worms as big as my fingers just gobbling him? You're going through his ears, go through his nose. As he's trying, as he's trying to blow it out, he go into his the hell's worms. Oh, you haven't you haven't you haven't seen the grasshoppers that Ezekiel described in his in his prophecy? They are having like like iron hell's worms having iron in. In their in their in their mouths and they they they, they pierce his skull with it and gobble out his brain. Worms from hell in judgment of God ate him alive. Alive. They give up the ghost ghost and the word of God multiplied in that city. Hallelujah. To the Lord. I haven't got nothing more to share with you tonight. See? Zipped up. Are you like Nebuchadnezzar tonight? Powerful, but you're not giving the glory to God. You're rich, but you say, I'm going to punish the Christians. I'm going to punish godly people. I'm not going to help them. You're not going to help yourself. <laughs> and we're coming to get your money. <laughs> we're going to spend your money. <laughs> you, you like it or not, it is God's money. <laughs> you can't stop us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you like Herod? 
You kill at will, do anything you want at will. Just do anything you want at will. Just nobody can stop me. Really? God is God. He's still God is angels. Whether in the book of Daniel or in the book of Acts, ears, I, Y, R, angels in the book of Daniel, angels in the Acts of the Apostles, they are the same words. Angeloi. You're listening to me. You don't want God to get you. So you get God. Say it again, Pastor. You don't want God to get you, so you get God. Get God with every power and strength that you have. Get God with every anointing that you have. Get God with all that you have. Get this God, man. Get this God. If you have not come to know this Jesus as Lord and Savior, Obviously, you are not growing, you are not discipled, you don't like discipline, you don't like to be disciplined, you don't like to push and press yourself. The word disciple is from the word discipline. We were talking on that on the Hope Report tonight, and I want to thank God for that television station. Hope Report, Mark Lindell's Recovery Center Incorporation, right there in the United States of America. By the grace of God, I'm coming back to talk to them, talk with them on next year. They've told me you would like you to come back. I, I'm looking forward. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. To the glory of Jesus. And we are trusting God to open more doors to you. But listen to me. You're shut up in hell right now. This is not the hell. That's not the only, the only hell that there is or there could be in the whole world. You're shut up right now. You are shut up right now. You know it. How do I know, Pastor? You have no peace in your heart. No God in the world. Say, Jesus, forgive me tonight. Forgive me of my pride. I'm a tiny little man, but I'm proud. Forgive me tonight, oh God. Give me a heart of flesh. Take my sin away. Take my sin away. Make me a child of God tonight. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And make me whole. And Jesus... I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer, congratulations, you become a bona fide child of God. I'll show you the address of which you will find me. Look at it, it's right there. It's harvestways.org. That's my address, harvestways.org. Email me to admin at harvestways.org. Text me to plus four four seven seven five eight one nine. Five, four, six, six. To the glory of Jesus. Pastor Jepson, all the way from Ghana, I really want to appreciate you and thank you, sir. And Merry Christmas to you and the family. Sister Richardson, thank you so very much. In the name of Jesus, Dan, we are expecting you to come home safely. God will bring you home. Everybody else is waiting for you, right? We love you. We love you. We love you. We're waiting for you to come home. Brother Vincent, and Sister Laurie Marks Vincent from Ontario in Canada. We love you. Merry Christmas. Sister Ennis, uh, Minister Ennis, thank you so very much. And many others whose names I cannot mention now. And those that are watching on replay across the world. By the grace of God, I'll come back to you on Sunday afternoon. That is Christmas Day at 3 o'clock. Yep, I'll be right here. I'll preach on Christmas Day. Yep, I'll preach in church and I'll preach on Christmas Day for you. And then next week, the 28th of December, by the grace of God, I'll be also right back here to the glory of Jesus Christ. I want to thank the Lord for the pastors at uh, in Pakistan that put together with our ministry, Pastors Mishi, Pastor and Mrs. Mishi, and uh, my very wonderful interpreter, uh, Brother Anderson. I uh, want to thank God for your lives. I met uh, Anderson's father today. He was also listening to the message. Whoa. And he says, I like to talk to the pastor that preached. And I said, give the mic over to him and and the machine. So we talked on the machine. God willing, I'll be with you next year. God willing. But you got to have to work hard. Multiply that church in Jesus' name. I'll be with you in Pakistan next year. God willing. The devil ain't going to be able to do nothing about it. In Jesus' name, I love you. I love you all. Merry Christmas in the name of the Lord.
I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.